Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a yellow ganzania flower to be uh, large scale uh, on canvas. And uh, we are going to be doing it step by step. I'll show you how to draw it, paint it uh, all the way through from start to finish. Uh, so I think it'll be fairly easy. I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, I've got my husband Mark with me here today. Hey there, everybody. He's man in our live show, so if you've got questions during the show, you can ask those and we'll try to answer them. Uh, this was my reference image. Uh, Jill Dennis uh, posted this in one of my uh, Facebook groups, and I fell in love with it. I love the water drops and everything. We probably won't add as many uh, water drops as, as this has, but uh, we'll definitely have some water drops in there. So if you've always wondered how to do that, that'll be something coming up at the very end. You can look for it. It'll also be a good blending lesson. So if you've always had trouble bl with blending uh, with acrylics, which can be kind of difficult, uh, this will be a good lesson for that. Um, I'm using a Pro Belgian Linen Archival Canvas Board by Fredericks. Uh, they provided the canvases for all my videos uh, this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, it's been great. <laughs> yes, it is. So full disclosure, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're sending us our canvases. We absolutely love them. And they did a giveaway this week. So this week uh, we give away um, actually six cases of these uh, which 12 come in a case. So our two winners, we had a winner on Facebook and a winner on Instagram. Our winner on Facebook was Angel Waffle. I think it's called Waffle, W-A-U-F-L-E, Waffle. Okay, sounds makes good you, to me. Makes you hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on Instagram, Kendra Z was our winner. So congrats Woo! to those two and their two friends that they both tagged uh, will also win. So we had six total winners. So Congratulations. Hopefully we'll be doing another giveaway maybe next month. Uh, Fredericks is real generous about that, so they're wanting to keep on doing them, and we're like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, thanks I'm all to about them. free stuff. Me too. I know. <laughs> I'm all about passing on the good stuff to my right. people who are watching too. It's awesome. All right, let's go over our palette really quick. I've got unbleached titanium, titanium white, carbon black, uh, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, yellow oxide. This is that new color, benzamidazolone, yellow, light, and medium. Uh, phthalo green, yellow shade, phthalo blue, green shade, uh, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. So um, if you don't have this yellow, you can substitute for cadmium or Hansa yellows are very similar. So, um, and really the reds do. Just get, just use whatever you've got, you know, red, uh, kind of a uh, berry red and a, and a more medium red, and a, like an orangey red, and you'll be good. All right, I'm gonna use just regular school chalk here. I've canvas, I've prepped my canvas with a coat of burnt umber. I just thought there's so many dark tones in the center of the flower uh, that it would be a good kind of background color for our flower, and I'm just gonna use chalk, and the center is, to draw it, I'm gonna use chalk, and the center is about on the third. So it's just a little bit slightly off if there's our third marks there, you can come down. So it's just slightly off center from third. So it probably hits the edge of the third on this side. And then coming this way, it's almost smack dab in the middle of the third. So you just kind of find that mark and make yourself kind of a circle here. And that'll be the center of your flower. Um, however big your center is, you, you know, your flower will go. This, this center is a about three fingers widths or so um, on this size canvas. So, you know, you just scale up depending on what size canvas you have. It fits in, it's not any bigger than the halfway mark. So if you started it, uh, it's really between the, like the quarter and the halfway mark here, this way. And then if you hit the halfway mark and the quarter mark here too, it's, it's kind of fits right in there, so. And then I'm going to make another circle that's kind of a little bit outside of it. And the bottom of it is a little bit closer on this edge. And that's this uh, part here that kind of circles around. So we did the inner circle here and then we're doing the outer circle. And then to do our petals, you can kind of just use uh, the center as your mark and just kind of do your little spokes here. And you can see how all of those petals are lining up with those spo 
spoke marks or whatever. Um, so just kind of take one and you're kind of imagining that it's touching the center here, but it's kind of coming out this way from that. So it's not like a straight line straight out. Uh, it curves out and we'll do this one because it kind of fills up. Uh, there's only two, three that are full petals. The rest of them are kind of cut off. So we'll do those first, or at least this one first. Curve it this way, and it's going to take up almost to the corner right there. And then this one is going to fit in between there, kind of tucked behind. And then there's a little bit of this one showing, but I'm going to go ahead and draw this one out first. It's kind of coming out sort of down, it's kind of angling down off the canvas here, this way, and then it curves back in at the end, and then it curves out and back in this way. And then there's another one tucked in back here, and it's kind of folded. There's another one here. You just see a little bit of it peeking through. There's a little one poking through right here. Almost going off the edge. And then this one comes out this way and points right about here. Fills up that section. This one comes out and overlaps it just a little bit. These two kind of or side by side, and then this one's kind of coming over here and going right off the corner. That one goes there. This one fits right in here. And then one more here and one little one down here. So not, not too hard. Just want to remember uh, these petals here should be about the same height. This one was longer, so it's a little bit longer than these two. This one was just slightly longer than this one. But um, you can kind of use your fingers to sort of make sure, you know, if this one was really tiny uh, and this one's really big, then it kind of can throw off the, uh, what balance of the flower or whatever. Cause it, who needs rulers? Who needs rulers? Well, I, yeah, who when needs you have, rulers when, when you've you got fingers? fingers and, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. It's my little trick chip of the day. <laughs> hey, we got uh, Miss Mona joining us today. Who? Mona. Hey, Mona. All the way from Sweden. Nice. Glad you're joining us. Uh, okay, so I spritzed down my canvas here, or my palette, I mean, uh, with a little bit of water. Just going to keep it moist while I'm working so that it doesn't dry out. Um, having a little spray bottle like this is real handy. So just kind of get yourself a little spray bottle with some water when you're working with your acrylics. And then if you want to do side cam here, I'm going to show how I put out my, my water or two. So uh, my palette's on this side. My water is right here and my towel is right here. So I'll be dipping in the water um, almost every time that I paint, um, every time I uh, pick up color. And uh, that's really important with acrylics. You don't want to have too much water, but not enough water will uh, make it go a lot slower and you'll use more paint. Okay, let's go over our brushes really quick. I've got a number six filbert, a number four filbert, and a number six angle bright, um, and a number one and two round from the Princeton 6100 series. So those are my favorite brushes. Um, then there's another series called Velvet Touch that they have that have a little bit smaller brushes. So this one's the 3 8 inch angle. It's a little bit smaller than that one. This is the smallest that they have in the 6100 series, so you can see. It's more like a half inch. And then uh, Willow's Blender, uh, 3 8 inch. And then I've got a number six filbert in case we need a smaller filbert. I'm not sure if we'll use this select filbert or not, but we'll see. We have it on standby. Just and in case. And who is that brought to you by? Princeton. Princeton is our brush sponsor. Nice. Yeah. And all of the materials and list of the colors and everything that I'm going to be using is down in the description of the video. So you click on the show more under the video, it'll drop down and you'll have all kinds of information down there to look at. Okay, I'll go do that right now. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start <laughs> with the Conacridome agenda. <laughs> and I'm just going to add it right in the center of my flowers coming out 
from that area there. It's really not going to show up very bright on this dark, but we don't need it to be bright. We just kind of want that tint of red in there in that part of the flower where it's touching down into the center. So I'm just going to do this whole area here and I'm pretty much staying in the middle of the petal. I watered it down just a little bit so it's kind of thin and I'm just sort of flicking it out from the center. So I'm putting the most color right here and then I'm just flicking my brush out. I'm not dragging it so I don't want the paint to go all the way out here. Just want it to stay kind of right there in the center and by kind of just flipping the brush like this uh, it'll fade out along these outer edges for you. So can you tell us again what the background color was? Burnt umber. Burnt umber. Yes. Somebody left it in the toaster too long. <laughs> I like mine kind of a golden brown umber. Oh, golden brown umber. Okay. Yeah, we don't. I don't like it burnt. You don't like it burnt. Okay. Oh, sorry. Got to do something with it, I guess. <laughs> Might as well put it on your canvas. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Just gonna ignore that. <laughs> Can you tell I'm on allergy meds? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, maybe a little bit. The good thing is I'm not sneezing. True. All right, I'm doing some red now, and really don't worry too much about this blending in. It can be kind of streaky. We're going to be adding other colors on top. We just kind of want to get. So we're going just, just beyond that red. And if you don't put too much paint on your brush and kind of start in the middle and flick this way and then out this way and then back and forth. So that'll kind of blend it in. So I'll do that again on this next one. Add a little bit of water. Grabbing some cadmium red. Pushing my brush nice and flat so I have a just a little bit of paint on there. It's not a not a ton. I might, might even just touch it on my paper towel to get the extra off. And then I'm going to kind of set it a little bit past like where I want the darkest color to be. So I'm going to set it down and flick it in both directions and then just start going back and forth. But I'm not moving it. I'm just flicking back and forth in the same spot over and over again. It may be that this is starting to dry, so it may not we may need to let that magenta dry because it's going to start lifting it if we mess with it too much while it's drying. Let's go ahead and tuck in some of this color down in here. In these back petals. There's a little bit of red. I'm not trying to cover up the, the brown completely here. I'm just kind of trying to add an, uh, another kind of color story into the mix. So we're we're wanting to keep it fairly dark, so I don't want to go in and cover all of this up that's dark in the center there. I'm going on the inside of this fold with this red. And the petals are going to grow. The, the streaks in these flowers are growing from the center out, so that's how we're going to put in all of our color. We're just going to follow the direction that the petals natural naturally grow. That'll give us those natural streaks and uh, if any of the streaks, you know, lines in our paint show, then it'll look like we meant to do that. It'll just be part of the flowers because it's got all these kind of streaky things happening in it here. to everybody who's joining us today. Yeah. It's a gorgeous Saturday here in the YouTube capital of the world. <laughs> Wrestleville, Arkansas. Arkansas, maybe. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. If you've just kind of stumbled upon us, welcome. You can subscribe to the channel, of course. Hit the thumbs up. And uh, check out all the other videos from Angela. She's got, what, three, four other videos? Just a few. Just a few. 
And this is the, I think, sixth or seventh in our large flower series. So we just did a pink daisy a couple, uh, a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we've got a poppy, an orchid, a lily, rose. Uh, what am I missing? Another blue poppy anemone. A flower. Uh, we're just trying Another to kind of hit all the flowers. <laughs> <So> <laughs> eventually we'll get them all. It's just <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> one flower at a time. All right, I'm going to grab white because this yellow is transparent. So if you're using cadmium yellow, you might probably won't need to use white because cadmium yellow is um, opaque. But since we're not, since this color is, is not transparent... We're going to, or what is transparent, we're going to need white. So we're going to use that along that outer edge. And I'm just going to kind of lightly dust it as it touches that red. We're going to definitely add more colors to blend these two together. So we're not really worried about blending at this point. We're, we're just going to kind of lay this color down, get our first layer of yellow down. So you notice I kind of lay it along the edge, and then as the as the paint's gone from my brush, then I kind of pull it towards the center. So you don't want to pull it towards the center if you've got too much paint on your brush, because otherwise you'll just get a really hard edge. You won't kind of get this broken line that we're looking for. So I've got a little water, pick up a little bit more paint. So I'm going to start and just use the edge of the brush to lay down the first little bit of color, and then lightly, very lightly, just kind of brush it toward the center a little bit. And I definitely want to leave some of these peekaboo dark areas in between my petals. So keep, keep, they don't have to touch all the way. This is actually going to take a few coats to get it to cover this brown, but... It was either paint it, paint it brown, and then paint the scent, or you know, paint it a paint it brown just in the center, or you know, paint the whole thing. So it's just easier to start out with the brown canvas. And I thought that the brown undertones would look good in this because it's kind of earthy colors. This one is split right there, so let me grab some red just so I can separate out those two just a little bit. I lost where this one starts and that one ends there. Okay. Oops, I'm a little off. Well, it's kind of deceiving because the petals are going off the off the edge of the canvas, so Yeah, it's hard to tell. Tell when you're off off. Yeah, true. <laughs> We'll definitely be toning down this yellow, but we just want to get this light color in. Don't worry too much about what it looks like at this point. We got we can do plenty with this. Acrylics are all about the layering, so you want to just kind of trust the process. You got to know that you're going to get to a stage in your painting where you're going to think that you're doing it all wrong. It's going to look terrible. Um, you know, it's just going to look kind of like a hot mess. It's getting there on this one. We're almost to the hot mess stage. Um, and then it'll gradually get better. So if you just keep on working with the process and working and add more layers and just keep on, you know, painting until it gets uh, to where it looks good. But the first few layers are just kind of about laying your foundation for the rest of the upper layers that are going to make it look better. So... Okay, how do you get your petals to look so soft? Oh, is that somebody asked me that? Is that some a real question? Yes. Okay. Wow. So I'm not somebody, huh? Oh no, I just no, no, I, I no, can't take it back now. <laughs> I understand. How do I get my petals to look so soft? Yes. Um, you know, it probably has to do with the um, this. I, I really don't know, honey. That's a hard question. Good thing I didn't ask it. 
I would think, I guess it's because I'm letting these edges kind of break up. I'm not doing them super solid. So by kind of letting the edges be a little bit rough, it sort of softens the whole look. And also kind of doing this dry brushing sort of in the center here. It also makes it look softer. Um, I think. Okay, I'll give you an easy question. Okay. How long have you been painting? Uh, about 30 years now. I was so going to say 20 minutes. In, huh? I was going to say about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we just said, hey, let's try this today. <laughs> and let's do it live. <laughs> no pressure. Go, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. What did you say? About 30 years. I, we've been, I think I started in 88 or so. In high school, that's when I decided I wanted to be an art major and really started getting serious about art. I'd kind of drawn a lot before that and uh, fiddled with it, but that's when I got started getting serious about it and did decorative painting for a long time. I've been doing canvases for about the last 10 years or so, maybe, maybe longer. 2005, so how long is that? 13 mm -hmm. years doing canvases before that we did craft fairs and wood crafts and things mark cut mark cut out all my little wood pieces hundreds and hundreds and hundreds if i did one i did two dozen you know of whatever it was that i was working on we did jewelry and little tchotchkes for the house on wood all kinds of stuff button covers button covers snowman Remember earrings that. Do they do that anymore? Things for your front door. Did I don't know. I think button covers was a very short-lived fad, but I sold a lot of them when they <laughs> for a short time period, for about a two-year period. There we did a lot of button covers. There's these little things. If you've never seen a button cover, it's like this little round disc. Um I will probably have some somewhere. Little little uh metal disc that you would slip over the top it, it had a clasp it opened up and the bottom had just like this little slot and you slid it over your button and then you snapped it shut and it held held on tight to your button and then on the top of the silver part we would glue our little wood pieces so we had ones for teachers that were real popular because they'd have little apple and a little pencil and the school mascot whatever that was you know we did special ones for all the schools in town Jeez, that's bringing that's a blast from the past right there Jeez, a lot of years doing that when all the, the whole time my two oldest boys were growing up that's what i did i waited for nap time and painted painted till about midnight every night you know painted at night and at nap times on the kitchen table yep in the kitchen table we did not have a studio no the whole pantry was was our yeah stored it in the storage laundry closet area there. yep laundry closet pantry area and pull it out every day didn't eat dinner on the table for multiple years there's <laughs> we still don't we still we got into the habit you know we have a really nice table now but we don't Ever use it <laughs> unless people come over. As our middle child calls it, the laundry table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> Good times. So I'm hoping there will be a traceable for this. There is. There will be a traceable on Patreon. So if you are part of my patreon crew you can look for that after you usually do it either the same day or the very next day after i trace it straight from the original painting so sometimes if my arm's not doing too hot after the show i'll wait till the next day but you're definitely getting to the hot mess stage you're gonna just be like this <laughs> is all wrong and really, we could have just filled in the petal with the 
yellow all together, but I didn't want to lose this dark part down here, so that's why I didn't do it that way. Definitely going to take a couple coats, though. Well, I just checked you over 1,200 supporters on Patreon. We are. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank that you, everybody. That is very awesome. It's incredible. When did that happen? I don't know. Huh. Maybe I should have started a Patreon page. <laughs> Send Mark snacks. And just fund your <laughs> snack habit. <laughs> Hashtag feed Mark. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. <laughs> you get snacks from all over. You've had, you've gotten snacks from all over the world now. Yep. Because pretty it some almost pretty, every continent. Some pretty some, incredible Somebody from fans. India needs to step it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> For Africa. We need to get some African snacks. <laughs> At Australia and Europe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Canada. It's funny. Sorry. I'm totally joking. I hope nobody thinks. That's right. Oh, gosh. We no. have to send them to Texas. I'm totally no, joking. No. <laughs> we are so joking. <laughs> Get in trouble for comments like that. <laughs> like, now she's asking for snacks. <laughs> it will happen. I made a comment one time. I was like, I think it was when we hit 70,000 subscribers or, or something. I was like, man, I wish that they sent it, that YouTube sent us a dollar for every Patreon pay, or person on, you know, that subscribed or if everyone that subscribed sent us a dollar, we Mark could retire. And I got some, some really nasty comment about it. <laughs> so she's like, she thinks that we should be paying her money now for subscribing. I'm like, no, no, so not. So please, <laughs> totally joking. <laughs> That's the whole wonderful thing about YouTube is that it's free. So it's just, we started it because I thought, you know, I enjoy painting. I want to share with other people. That was my whole goal. Def definitely didn't ever think that it was going to turn out to be something where 1,200 people are going to be sending us money every month. It's pretty incredible. I know. So it just blows up my mind. It, it really does. We it's appreciate the support. It's shocking. So we love it. So appreciate you guys that watch. All righty. Let's do... Right. Let's start uh, putting some in the center. We'll let that dry really well. You got to fill in the lemon there? Huh? You got to fill in the lemon? Somebody in comments said it looked like a lemon in the center. Oh. Oh, yeah, lemon slice. I see it now. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, I get it. Sorry. I, I'm i right brain thing right now. I'm in the... Yeah, she's painting everybody. I'm in the zone. zone. I can't... She's in the zone. Zone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm in the zone. All right, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here for a little round brush. I'm just going to do little dots in the center here. I've mixed yellow oxide and orange, cadmium orange, and I'm just going to do little dots all in the center here and just leave a little bit of dark space between them. Try to get them tucked in real close together. This is pretty good. I might be able to be doing them too big. And just all these little itty bitty dots in the center. Now, if you wanted to simplify this, you could use, uh, well, I have that Will's, Will's Blender, but you could use like a deer foot stippler and just stipple and it wouldn't look like dots but it would you know look kind of fuzzy you can kind of simplify it that's what I did with my Gerbera daisy um, when I did that one years ago it's one of the very first large flowers that I did actually the first large flower one of the very first videos that I ever did on YouTube too 
So the quality is really terrible. The audio is awful and there's just like a fan blowing in the background. So the whole thing is like, you know? <laughs> so 90% of my first comments were like, <laughs> or I should say, you know, probably 10% of the, you know, there's positive ones. And then there's like, what is that noise? <laughs> so <laughs> we've come a long way. <laughs> We're almost getting professional. Almost. I don't want to get too professional though, because then it. We're not. I'm. I'm definitely not a. Not a slick person. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely not. It uh, wouldn't be me. <laughs> it's too put together. I don't think I'll ever stop dropping brushes on things. I've been painting this long. <laughs> I'm probably not going to stop dropping water on my paint or, you know, getting it on my hand and stuff. If I haven't, if I haven't stopped now, it's probably too late. So that's all right. All right, I'm going to grab some yellow now. And I'm just going to do some little crisscrossy things here. Just not think, don't think about it too much. Just kind of change the direction and do these little crossy hey uh Janie wants to know can you make the orange color if you don't have it uh yeah you can make something similar you could use if you have cadmium um red light uh you can just add yellow to it and it'll get you it won't be the vibrant uh orange but I toned it down quite a bit so it really doesn't matter um and really you don't have to have the cadmium red either cadmium red can be kind of mixed with um if you have the cadmium, uh, here, I'll show you, I'll just show. You can use quinacridone, magenta, and cadmium red light. And you can get a color, see that different? It's almost the same as your cadmium red medium. So really, if you don't have this, um, if you were just going to buy one red, I would, I would buy, you know, the quinacridone magenta and then buy the cadmium red light. And then you can use it to mix your cadmium orange as well. So you can use it because it's orange leading, leading um, red. Use that and like a, I'm not sure if you can't. Cadmium yellow light or cadmium yellow medium. Probably the cadmium yellow medium. So it's not going to be quite as vibrant as that cadmium orange, but you can get it fairly close. So. Okay, we had a request to zoom into the center. So when you start painting, I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Okay. So you well, I'm done for now. I'm going to let it set for now, but we'll, we'll zoom in here in a little bit more when we do more in the center. I'm going to keep you, on working on this. Can you paint it over and again? Okay, we do. <laughs> we do it? No, yeah, okay. I'm doing the under layers of the center, and then we'll do the top layers after. So, <clears throat> all right, sorry. I did, that was really close to the mic now, too. We moved our mic closer. Yes. So we got it nice and Probably. loud that time. Oh, yeah. It's working much better. Full. Is it? Good. Oh, yeah. Good, good deal. Yeah, it's about, you can just barely see it, but it's right there. <laughs> it's like right here. You go right there. <laughs> so it's just outside of the camera reach now. It used to be about a foot farther away, so we finally got it on an arm, moved closer. So, oh, see, I did, I dropped water. But fortunately, this is dry, so it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to use this cloth and just take off my chalk marks. And that way I can see where I've got everything now. And I don't have any chalk covering anything. Don't do this until your paint's completely dry. Otherwise you can kind of lift your paint off. And don't scrub it too hard. I'm just using water on my cloth. This is a, these are shop towels that I use. They come, they're actually in the automotive department in Walmart. I get them in like four packs, big rolls, and they last you forever. But they're super thick. And if you can't get these, you can use like Viva. Viva is my favorite. 
because they, um, they're thick as well. So shout out to Viva. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now we can see what we got working with here. So it looks good. We kept this dark enough. If you covered too much of the center up, you can go back in now and add more of that brown, but I think, I don't think we need to. I think it looks good. All right, so I'm gonna use the filbert this time because I want a little bit more control. So we're gonna go a little bit, um, start putting our upper layers in. So I'm gonna use another. This time I'm just gonna use straight benzimidazolone. And you'll see how having that white layer down there makes it super brilliant now. It just pops that color right off the canvas. And if I'd used straight white, it would even pop it more. So if you want it even more bright, you could just use straight white instead of that yellow for that first layer. Let me do one with white over here. I'll put in a little bit of white on a couple places. See if we can get that to dry before we come back around to it. Just on the ones that are gonna be sticking out the most. We'll do a little bit here and we'll let it dry and come back to it. Okay, so let's grab some of the Benzomidazolone yellow light here. Put the color on the outside thick and then lightly dust it towards the center, just barely touching down. And these edges are pretty thin right here. If you look on your flower, there's a pretty, there's, there's a pretty solid line here that goes right down into that brown. So we can put this brown back on top. Um, so don't worry about this line coming in being clean right now. Don't worry about it. I would in fact go a little bit farther down than you think you need to into the center, just so that when we put our dark color back on top, it it will cover anything we put right now. And I'm just kind of tucking my brush in to kind of fit it in where those petals overlap when they do overlap. Let's see if this is dry enough. We'll see if we can get this yellow go on top of it. There we go. When you're laying with layering with acrylics like this, the main thing that you need to worry about is just making sure that your layers dry in between your, you know, so that you're not trying to layer too quickly. Because if you layer on top of wet paint or paint that's starting to dry, you'll just end up lifting the whole thing and it'll become kind of a gummy mess. Um, acrylics get real sticky when they start to dry. So they, um, and they kind of actually stay sticky even after they dry. Um, they'll stick to each other. If you put two paintings face to face after they're finished, even after they're dry, they can stick together. So you never want to do that with acrylics. You want to varnish them and don't lay them face to face. Uh, but they, uh, they can be kind of persnickety, so you just want to make sure that you're letting them dry between your layers here. Man, you went with persnickety, huh? I know. That's a weird word, isn't it? Whippersnapper. I'm going to pull out whippersnapper and <laughs> later. It's just you wait. <laughs> Conundrum. We'll just be using all kinds of weird name words today. Okay, I'm looking up persnickety. <laughs> persnickety. Yeah, I'm sorry to our European folks. They're like, what is that word? They don't even know. I try not to use a lot of slang because we do have an international audience, I'm sure. It's going to be confusing. 
placing too much emphasis on trivial or minor details. Fussy. Fussy. That's what I'm yeah, looking for. Requiring a particularly precise or careful approach. Exactly. I'm not persnickety. Acrylics can be persnickety because they need a careful approach. <laughs> you do have to kind of know. You just have to know kind of what they, you know, what they like and don't like. Kind of like a woman. <laughs> I'm sure men can relate. <laughs> Right. Looking I've learned long enough. I've, that, I've learned over thirty years. See, he's been around the whole time that I'm not for my art journey, so he's seen the the changes of the development all right from the beginning. Mark has. He used to go and hang out with me in high school while I was painting. But I think he was yep. not really interested in art though. Oh, it was art all right. <laughs> Just not painting. (laughs) 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 Good, good. Good answer. Thank you. That was pretty good. You're pretty slick. (laughs) Smooth. (laughs) So uh, somebody asked in chat, so how long, long have I been doing this? It's been what? Since 2015, I think. Really? Mm-hmm. I think. I thought about a year and a half. Maybe two years. I thought it was 2015, no? Maybe, I don't know. No, maybe that was when I started the live shows was 2015. You started yeah. me a, with me about a year later. About a year. It was, the, it was the flag one with the dove. That was the first one you did with me, I think. Okay. So you need to look for that one. Let's see. Or it might have been the, it might have been the boho vase. I have it noted somewhere. Whichever one that was first. Yeah, I was behind the scenes. And uh, Angela was her own camera person. Yeah. We had a camera that was, uh, you had to manually it's adjust. Now the and, palette cam here. This right. one right here. So she was starting the the show and doing the audio and the camera work. and Yeah. And uh, so over the last year, since we started Patreon, we were able to raise the funds to buy a few more cameras this and, camera. and more audio and, that camera. <laughs> <laughs> and this mic and, yeah, and, and the Mark's mic. mic and a soundboard and lights and yeah it's we come a long way this year been able to have that funding has been crucial it's been so nice cuz i used to hold the palette and i would have it in front of the camera half the time so it was me you know with the palette in front of the camera and then Remembered to set it down and stuff, and it was it was a lot to remember too, just having to do it by myself. So, it's so nice having Mark helping me. I can just concentrate on the painting part. I know that he's taking care of the rest. Although I do Trying still to. set up, set everything up, because he's at work. So I I just do the prep work, and he comes in and controls it all. Takes all the credit. Exactly. That's all right. All right. I'm pulling it down into that red a little bit because I feel like it needs a little bit of yellow underneath there when we start doing the orange on top. Some of these are just not covering very well, so I'm Adding a second layer of that yellow, adding a little bit of white. Okay. I was going to say something when you were talking earlier, and I can't remember what I was going to... Which I hate when I do that. I don't know. All right, I'm just gonna keep on going. I'm trying to stay away from these, the center here. 
the hardest part about this is going to be to get this part right here this little area put your dark color down and then just very 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 lightly dust, dust it just kind of barely touch along that canvas to get a little bit of color coming off and if you get too much you can always go back in and put that darker color back in and try again so it may take a couple of times around to get the knack of that blending there very light right there and then down here I'm pressing down a little harder so I because I want more paint to come off of my brush and I want it to kind of cover more solidly the only part that's going to be red is really kind of right in here the rest of this is all going to be or yellows and orange so using the edge of my brush this way I can kind of do lines too I can kind of pull from that light color in like that and you're always kind of wanting to turn curve these outside edges can go this way but you don't want them to go straight this way you want them to turn in always wanting them to turn in and point towards the center of your flower so when you're doing these lines you know don't uh, don't end up uh, ending your lines kind of facing out this way so I wouldn't want to like do like that because that doesn't make sense for the flower you want it to go towards that center so even when I'm on these outside edges and I'm curving it I'm always curving it, it back in towards the center that's what makes it look soft and flowy and part of the flower too alrighty are you bored over there? no I'm just trying to get this to cover it's not okay. covering very well it's that it's this new yellow it's just transparent so it doesn't want to cover over this dark Probably should have used the cadmium yellow. Or just white for that first layer. I'm going to go right over the top of this one. I'm not worried too much about that one. If you get too much paint on top of here, you can always go back and clean that edge back up. But they're actually pretty, pretty much the same color right there. So. Okay, how do you know when your brushes are old and ready to be replaced? Uh, when they won't hold their edge. So if they won't stay together like that when you're painting with them, you can see how that those brushes, those bristles are all sticking together. There's none that are flying out and not, you know, out off to the side or somewhere. That's when uh, that's when you need to replace them as if they don't uh, stay together. And sometimes they'll look like they're frayed when they're dry, but then once you wet them down, they'll come back together so even an older brush that's looking a little fuzzy as long as it you know when you wet it down and you're painting with it if, as long as it sticks together for you while you're painting it's fine you just need to there we go all right but yeah that's that's when I know you know it's just if you get to going and and you have you have little stray stray hair sticking out um, and it'll basically it'll paint in areas you don't want it to paint so you know you'll be trying to do a line a straight line and you'll have a double line because you'll have another section out there where just like one or two random hairs are or sticking out and causing all kinds of problems so all right, we're looking pretty good here. So 
I think I'm going to go ahead and do the center now. And let me see. Go ahead and use this. I'm going to use the angle brush, the smaller angle brush. And I'm going to use the burnt sienna. A little bit of the unbleached titanium. Okay, and I'm just going to set it down on the petal where I want it to be and stroke it in towards the center. Did you want to zoom in? I think you said something about zooming in when I do the center. You're good? Okay. We're there. Nice. It would help if I would turn up the volume on my mic. So you could hear me? So I could hear me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you zoomed a little too close here. I'm back out just a yeah, wee bit. just a little bit. So I want it to stay fairly dark. But I want it just a little bit lighter than that dark, dark brown. So... It's just had a little bit of white added to that burnt sienna to help make it visible. And I'm letting the edges be fuzzy. You see how they're kind of jaggedy. That's kind of how it looks like on the petal and the flower. These edges are kind of ragged. So. They're going to be a little bit taller along this top edge. And then the ones down here are going to be a little bit shorter. Because I think that the flower's tilted a little bit away from us. So we're seeing a little bit more of this top section here. And I'm flicking so that this bottom edge stays dark. If it's not if it's not dark enough, you can grab some of that burnt umber, or I'm going to grab a little bit of black even here, and just pull from the opposite direction up with that black. Make sure it's really nice and dark down in there. Don't worry about your white, your yellow flowers. Try to go, or you know, these yellow sections, just try to kind of go in between. It's okay if it touches a little bit on the black. It's, we're going to put more more colors on, so. That'll give it even more depth right there. All right, and then like right up here, I'm seeing that, see how it's kind of all blended in? It's too, too much the same color right here. So I'm gonna grab some burnt umber and some my quinacridone magenta and put that dark color back in right there. Pull up. Just want to really dark, I need it right here too. This needs to be nice and dark right there. Just 
grabbing that quinacridone magenta, so it's making it that slightly pink color. Right there, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of black too. Let's mix some black with the quinacridone. Get it even darker right there. Okay. Keep it real low though. You don't want it to pull this black too far up. You just want it really dark right there. container of tang going over there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it does look like tang. Yep. Sure does. That's funny. Thank you. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I'm going to grab the cadmium red light now. And I'm going to go right in between the yellow and the reds. And I'm just going to kind of start it out pretty light. I'm just going to kind of lightly rock that brush back and forth so that I get some streaks. We can add more yellow. We'll probably add another one more layer of yellow after this. So still layers, layers and layers and layers. That's the key. This one's almost all orange through here. So it starts about like that. You leave a little bit of a border, but then this all is going to be this reddish orange all the way to the middle. Having that yellow underneath will make this even brighter than it would be against that brown. So that's why I came in so far with that yellow. Not too bad, about an hour so far. I figured this would be about a two hour video. Usually the two, the other large flowers have all been about two hours, so. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit more simplified, but I'm not sure if it's going to get there or not. It's not a very difficult flower to, to draw. I don't think it's particularly difficult to paint necessarily. It's got a lot of overlapping petals is all. The overlapping part is the most difficult. You know, it's these sections like this that can cause problems for beginners, but if you do it in the same way that I'm doing it, hopefully it'll, working back to front, you know, um, hopefully it won't be too bad. This is probably in the same level as the pink daisy was that we did last week. Or a couple weeks ago, whenever last time, the last large flower that we did. About the same. Let's put a little bit on the back side of this one, too. Now, see if I went over like that, I can just kind of rub, rub that off while it's still wet. So, if you do go outside your lines, don't worry, worry about that. You can either cover it up with more paint on top, or if you catch it in time, you can just wipe it right off. Okay, using that light cadmium, or I'm sorry, the Benzai yellow light here. I found that you just gotta go quickly with that word. You can't try to slowly pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Benzamidazolone. There you go. 
I don't know if that's right or not, but that's how the Golden guy Did said he? it. Okay. Yeah. Kind of glaze. It's this is kind of between glazing and dry brushing. You, it's like dry brushing, but you have a little bit of extra water on your paint and brush. So I'm doing the kind of dry brushing brush stroke, but I've got a little bit of water. You can also use glazing liquid if you have it to help with this part instead of water. Just add a little glazing liquid. Then every now and then I'm going to touch it on my paper towel to get off the extra moisture. That was your cue to do side cam, but this, you weren't listening. Thanks for calling me out. I'm sorry. I was just... No, that's okay. I'm ready. It's all right. It's over now. Too late. We can re reenact it. Okay. Oh, every now and then you can dip, touch it on your paper towel. See, that was important. <laughs> so when you say touch it on your paper towel, you mean put the tip of your paintbrush on the paper towel? Mm -hmm. Just the tip. Okay. Not like with your nose or anything like that? Right. No. Okay. All the right. Brush. Thank you. He's smart, Alec. <laughs> I'm going way too far out with this color doesn't need to be that far out all right okay so we don't have the benzamidazolone in our description i know i have it as cadmium in the description because i figured most people had that it's it's a newer color so i didn't so you can use cad yellow instead of the benzamidazolone yes i said that at the very beginning okay video. all right and now we set it here in the middle. We did. We set it in the middle, too. We might say it again later on. I Yeah, I think I have said it a couple of times. <laughs> got an attitude today. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me. I think I'll go back to not paying attention. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I can't paint a straight line when I'm laughing. <laughs> it's just safer to retreat and to not pay attention. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> la la la, I'm not listening to Angela. <laughs> I'm going to go grab some of this yellow and pull it back over the red. There, and this is where I can kind of do some little streaks too if I want to with the edge of my brush. Okay, there we go. So the areas where I don't want as much paint to come down, I'm just not pressing as hard on my brush. So that's that's just gonna come with practice, you know, because you may find that if you're having trouble with uh, 
you know, with this technique, the easiest thing to do is just to put less paint on your brush. The less paint that you've got, the, you know, uh, easier it'll be to control. You may have to reload your brush more often, but you won't uh, have it uh, too much color being deposited too quickly onto the canvas. I'm just going to go right up against that edge there. on my paper towel, pick up some paint. Could somebody use like a rake brush for the streaks? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. I'm all for using whatever you worked for you, you know develop your own. I'm just showing you kind of how I approach it, but there's lots of different ways to paint, lots of different techniques and things. And so, you know, just I think the fun about painting is that everybody kind of gets to explore and learn their own different style and develop, you know, your favorite way of doing things, maybe different than the way I do mine. But there have been a lot of pretty cool llamas in my group. That's all I have to say. So if you are part of my Thankful Art group, you need to go check out the llamas because there's some pretty rocking llamas happening in there. They're fun because they're all different personalities. It's like the... I wonder if your paintings start looking like you after a while, you know? <laughs> like your pets start looking like you. I wonder if your paintings start looking like you after a while. Because <laughs> it's like... All the different llamas have their own little personalities on there. It's so cute. Some look more serious and some look, you know, real kind of silly. And some just look super cute. And, and the adorable. names. Oh, yeah. And people are naming them. Yeah, they're naming them different things. Like, what are the, well, Tina is the most popular name, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I've seen several Tinas. <laughs> I never did late name mine. I need, yeah. Oh, yeah, and Nathan, my, my son, when he was here, he was here that weekend when we painted the llama, and he was like, you know, next time you need to let the live audience name your llama, you know, you let, name your llama. It's like, oh, that's genius, Nathan. So next time we do an animal, we'll, we'll be having the live audience get involved, and in, you guys go pick out the name, whatever it is that we're painting. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> I'm going over now with quinacridone magenta, starting from the center here. What that'll do is it, it kind of turns it to that cadmium red there where it meets the orange that we just put down, or the cadmium red light that we just put down. <clears throat> and quinacridone is, is transparent, so you'll want to make sure that you have, you know, some color close to it. Uh, it has to, you know... It won't show up as any anything really major under on top of the brown. So if you don't have uh, a lighter color under there or some white or something, it won't show up. But it shows up really good against that orange. So what? That we put down. So which brush were you using? This is the filbert I've been Filbert's. using this okay. whole time, pretty much on the pedal petals. Okay. that pro tip there of rotating the canvas around so you can get good yes yeah angles. get a good angle because sometimes it can be awkward you know to pull if you're trying to do this flicking technique you know if you're trying to do it in an awkward angle just rotate your canvas it's going to be easier probably to do it in this direction if you're 
right-handed and you write, uh, you know, well, I don't know why you wouldn't write left to right. <laughs> I guess if you're Hebrew, you may be writing Hebrew. Or what is the one that they do? They're lettering up straight up and down. Oh, you got me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, um, for the most part, it's going to be more comfortable for you. You know, just kind of holding it, rotating it so that you can get a good angle. of Even if you're doing it on a canvas, on an, your canvas on an easel, you can still turn your, can, your canvas over on the easel. And I do, I've done that. And rotate it so that you get a good angle for flicking paint. All right, so now... Now it's starting to come together. Now you're like, okay, this is starting to make sense. So now I want to, we're gonna need to do one more layer of the yellow, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab that cadmium red and add a little bit of it, just in a few places, grabbing a little bit of water there. Cadmium red. There might be just a few places where I want a little bit more of the solid red. I'm going to grab that quinacridone magenta and pull back over. lost that little bit of dark right there so I'm going to grab that black and touch it up right just right there okay there we go when you get the chance somebody's asked to see chalk bear okay <laughs> I wish I knew the artist because she's getting a lot of free publicity. I'm sure she'd sell a few. I need to see if I can find her, if I got a card from her when I bought bought Little Chalk Bear. See if she's got a mark on the back. No, there's no mark or anything. There's Chalk Bear. Isn't he cute? <laughs> you can see it in the water cam. Oh, oh yeah, right. okay. <laughs> there, I'll put him where he can. Oh, Oops, nope, he's too losing far his off chalk. There. Too far off there. Go. <laughs> Priorities. Just right, so you can see them. I've also got my cardinal out there. I just put the cardinal out where you can see him too. That's the. Are you gonna uh, get paint all over him? I know he's getting paint all over. He's cute. Yeah, I don't want to paint him too close to my paint. And then I've got my owl with my, I've got my owl clock and, or my, my owl um, lamp and my owl. Uh, Dot holder. Don't say it. I can't pull him out because he's stuck. He's got don't, cords. Yeah, what? Don't mention the name. That should not be mentioned. Oh, yeah. That's right. I need to turn her off, actually. Alexa. Put her on timeout. Yeah, she's turned off now. She can't come on. I can't remember what, what I was saying the, that one time. There was one, there was one week, or like a series of paintings for that I was saying something, and I don't know if it's a paint color. It's got, it's probably was a paint color, and she was thinking I was saying Alexa, and so she'd turn on in the middle of the show. But she controls all of our lights, so it's been really nice because we have a ton of lights <laughs> a ton of them if I had to try to turn them on I was turning them all on manually for a long time there so that was uh, it's been really nice to have it all automated just walk into the studio and say turn them on and she'll do it alright I'm using yellow oxide now I'm going to use that yellow cadmium or uh, the yellow medium there the Benzabendazolone. 
And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that kind of over the top of the orangey layers. Kind of tone them down a little bit. And I'm going to use this to streak. So I'm going to use the edge of my brush and go from the If I start in a bright area, then pull, then I won't have if you start it if you start your line in the middle of a, of the area where you want the streak to go, then you're going to have a harder time blending it in. So if you start either off the canvas Trying to fix that part that I started. There we go. Right here would be a good one. So I'm going to start down here where the yellow is brightest and then pull toward the center. And that way I don't have to worry about this blending into anything. It'll already be blended and then I can just I'm just flicking, it's just this lever, lever, lever motion. Where I set it down and just pull slightly. I'm not moving my hand at all. Just kind of flicking with my wrist. Okay, uh, back on the brushes and the fraying. Uh-huh. Why do they fray? Is it because of the quality, meaning like the cheaper ones will fray? Yes. The, yeah, it does. It There's a lot of factors. The cheaper ones will fray. I mean, they'll just start breaking down after a while. You know, they're, um, acrylics are really caustic. So they're, you know, it's just, it's basically like a plastic. So it'll eat away at whatever you're using with them um, naturally anyways. A good brush material you know good synthetic that's why you never use natural natural um like watercolor br brushes with the natural squirrel hair and things like that they're way too soft for acrylics and they'll start to fray almost immediately um there's that said there are some blends of squirrel and it does make your brushes hold a lot more water and softer though there are some like the simmons the, the robert simmons sapphire line that i used for a long time it did have natural uh, synthetic blend it but for the most part you're going to look for synthetic brushes with acrylics hog bristles are okay too hog bristles are these um, like brushes like this that have that kind of uh, bristly white um, texture but they're you know they're not going to make uh, smooth blending for you so your brush will start to fray like that when uh, when the the ends of them it's like split ends you know the ends of them will start splitting this one you can see the gap right there in the middle and it doesn't matter how much water i add to it it's going to stay it's going to stay flared out that's just a old brush that i've used and the paint's gotten dry down in here after time and time you know i do wash them every time that i paint with them but um you know, after time, they just start breaking down. And if if you don't get all the paint out of that silver ferrule area every single time you paint with them, over time it just starts to build up and it it creates that the space between the bristles and they start to f flare out and they won't stick together when you're painting. So I'm very fanatical about cleaning your brushes. Clean, clean every time, even if it looks clean. Test it on a white paper towel. And see if, if you don't see any color when you do like that. There shouldn't be any color down there. If it's showing color, then you know you need to wash it again. Mark knows. Mark's. Oh, Mark knows. I, I still check his work even when he. <laughs> even when he. I still don't. I don't trust. I mean, because I'm so paranoid about. The paint getting stuck. I've done it enough times that I know, you know, just 
So he'll he'll go through and he'll be so sweet and he'll wash my brushes out there and I'll take them back out there and wash them myself. <laughs> <laughs> Check them all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Adding some of the yellow light here to the yellow oxide. Just keep going around and this is where I'm going to kind of clean up any edges. So if I kind of went over the top of anything can kind of clean up those edges. I've got a little bit of white. I mean, hats off to the first person who said, you know what, if we just remove the fur from the squirrel before we paint. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh my gosh, now all the PETA folks are going to be writing me, honey. You know, that was genius. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking. He's totally joking. It's so hard to paint. <laughs> well, they won't hold still. Exactly. <laughs> You're terrible. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's funny, but I'm sorry. <laughs> he totally doesn't mean it. I hope, yeah, I didn't really think about the fact that, yeah, that. I mean, funny. what they do is after they come out of the barber, they just use the. Right. The hair that they cut off is kind of like locks for love, but with, <laughs> like sheer and sheep. But with squirrels, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're terrible. We're gonna be in so much trouble. <laughs> He's totally joking. I'm sorry. I'm so scared right now. <laughs> oh my god. Now we're gonna have save the squirrels. I need to paint a squirrel now. Just to make up for that. Shearing squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it would grow back. Yes, right? it would, just just like it does on sheep. Exactly. So you just That's what they do. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even want to know. I don't I don't I don't use the squirrel hair brushes, so don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm sure they try to make it. As easy on the animal as possible. I like squirrels. Yep. Spencer's nickname was Squirrel for a long time. He hated it. Oh, he still does. He hated it. I don't even know how it started. I think it was probably mm -hmm. that movie Up when, you know, it was like Squirrel. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it started. We had to stop calling him that because he didn't like it. I thought it was so cute, but... Ten-year-old boy, not so much, I guess. <laughs> now he's 16. He's over it, but he still doesn't let me call him that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I had my life. Speaking of 16-year-old boys, <sighs> Spencer drove. We drove on the main road the other day. <sighs> we only ran off the road once, so that was promising, I guess. But Mom was not happy. Mom may have said a couple of cuss words under her breath. Just a couple. <laughs> and had a death grip on the... <laughs> Everybody survived. And I, and I did press my foot down on the brake, my, on my side of the... the you imaginary brake. My imaginary brake on my side multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> that was scary. He did okay. We're, we're going to work on our braking, though. <laughs> we're going to work on braking before you need to brake. <laughs> like, <laughs> slowing down before you need to brake. Uh, okay. Now I'm adding white here. This is the cadmium yellow, or the yellow light here, the benzene, benzai light. So adding that glow to the edge of the petals there. We've had, this is probably the fourth layer of yellow that we're putting down here, so... And I think it is the fourth layer of yellow. So you can see how you really needed the 
other layers underneath to give it that depth. Otherwise, you just don't get that kind of glowing feeling look if you are going straight on top of that brown. Just takes a little bit for that paint layers to build up and go right down in. Here, Spencer. Yeah. He knows we're talking about him. <laughs> Here we go. kind of our finishing layer here on the flowers here so I'm just going to use this very sparingly you don't want to overdo these bright highlights because they can kind of take over and you want to use them very strategically strategery here you want to That's my Will Ferrell. <laughs> Strategery. I think that's an actual quote, though. It is. He used it all the time on this. Now when he was doing Bush. Right, but I think... I think he uh, actually used that word. I think so. Let me see. I thought it was something Will Ferrell made up. All right, use a little bit of white here just to... Okay, it was made up. Yeah, I kind of figured. This is where you can go in through, and if you've got any areas where you need to just kind of define the separation between the petals, you can use a um, angle brush and get a little bit of your red or maybe a little bit of the quinacridone magenta, whatever color you want to use. Um, take the color off, you dip it in your water, and then just wipe the back end on a paper towel so that the color stays on the tip but it's pretty much clean on the back here. And then you can kind of go between your petals and add a little shadow between them here and there. Say that was you know, too bright. It'll make the upper layers of your petals pop out a little bit more if you've got uh, you know, some overlapping that that you need to create some, you know, separation. So, I think we did okay. Most of these I can kind of tell where the one petal ends and the other one begins, but... There we go. So let's get in a little bit of the yellow green now. I'm going to use that yellow if I can get some. Just a little bit of yellow. I'm going to use a little bit of the burnt umber too. There we go. 
wipe most of it off on my paper towel. So I just have a little bit on my brush here. I'm going to use it to create some streaks in my center part of my flower. Right on that area around the center. I'm going to use a little bit of unbleached titanium with a little bit of the cadmium red light there. And I'm going to use that along the edge here too, just create some little streaks. Just going to kind of pop that edge out just a little bit. Doesn't you want to keep it really right up at the top of the brightest part of that part that's sticking out, but you should see that little bit. And you can see where we've done it here, and we haven't done it over here. It pulls that color, that whole center section forward, just having that little bit of highlight in there. She's in the very tip of my brush, kind of at an angle, pointing the tip down and drawing a little bit towards the center. All right. And I'm going to continue to use this. I'm going to use some yellow oxide. A little bit of burnt, um, burnt sienna with it. And I'm going to create these little V shapes. There's these little V things that come out from the center. There's sort of a flat center. And then there's these two little wings that kind of come out on each side of the petals. So they kind of point toward the petal tip. So they're I don't want to get too fussy with that though, because I don't want to lose the dark area. So I'm just going to kind of do some little lines around the like that. And I need to use burnt sienna. little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to thin it down a little bit. Wipe off the extra. And then I'm going to shade over in between on top of what I just did. And get some dark stuff down in In between those colors there a little bit. Let's go ahead and use a little bit of this color around the outside of our center. So I'm kind of just shading this whole area here. I'm leaving this area pretty bright around the outside there. I need a little bit more yellow. I'm going to grab some white and some yellow. This is the yellow medium. I'm going to add a little bit of that, just a little bit. Very little. Just on the tips on that outer area. Like that. 
And then we're going to do little dots. Get a little bit more of the yellow. Little dabs. In between this outer area and this inner side. And then I'm going to use the tip and draw some little lines going in different directions. It's kind of we already did this once, but doing it again because we put some shadowing in so kind of lost some of that that we put in originally and then I'm going to use the edge of it to create some highlights on the center part those little dots I don't want to cover up all of the orange, but I want to have some highlights on top of those. Okay. They actually are a little bit too big. They could have been smaller. Let me go ahead and touch up with some orange on top just to soften that color up. I'm just going to kind of break it up a little bit with some little dots of yellow just so it's not so perfectly clean there. Use some yellow, orange, and white here. Go back through here and just touch that area up one more time. I hope you've been staying on camera because I haven't been paying attention. Yeah, I have been. Okay, good. I haven't moved. Use a little bit of burnt sand. I'm trying to find the right color here. No, that works. I think that's closer to it. Okay, so burnt sienna and the yellow. And then we'll add some white to that. There we go. You can use a smaller brush if you want. Like I can, let's go ahead and try it with this smaller round brush here. This is number one. It'll be easier to fit in these small areas here. These kind of flare out in a couple of places, so 
can have some that are going a little bit taller than others. And if you want to do it like the picture, there's they kind of do this Y shape on every petal. Some burnt umber and unbleached titanium. Paints are starting to dry. I haven't sprayed them the whole time here. Oh, put that there, honey. He was providing ambiance. Okay, well, you almost got dipped in the paint. using the Willis blender. I thought I might use it in the center, but I didn't. So I always feel a little guilty for the brushes that get left over here by themselves. They're just kind of sad. They're like, they weren't needed. They're the bench. They're on the bench, you know. They're like sitting waiting to get to play. They just never get the chance. Okay. going a little lighter than I think I need to on this so if this seems too bright just that there's a method to the madness here so just to trust it we'll get it where we want it to be Doing these lines and random dots in that area there. And I'm going to use the burnt sienna and some orange. And we're going to shadow in here. I'm putting a lot of detail into this center, but honestly, if you want to simplify it, just stipple it. It's not, it doesn't need to be this detailed. It really doesn't. So. Okay, and then I'm going to use some of that burnt umber. And go back in and add some dark little shadows. You could do this multiple times, you know, building up layers, shadowing them, adding other colors. 
Just keep doing it until you get it to where you like it. I'm kind of not happy with those being perfect circles, so just kind of toning those down. We'll go back in with some yellow. Yellow, white, orange, and dab back in. Those little circles there. Let's use the burnt umber, thin it out, water it down, and I'm just going to lightly glaze over the top of that. Burnt umber, burnt sienna here. Pull out from the center. Chat. What? Oh yeah, <laughs> super chat nice. from Sharon. She says, "Love this." Awesome, thank you, Sharon. We appreciate okay. your donation. Yes, thank you. Glad you're enjoying it. I know it's no tank, but it'll <laughs> do. <laughs> I added some of the light, Benzai light, and white and I'm gonna go back in now and just dab back in my little circles I just had to tone that down it just was too perfectly round I don't know it was bugging me so don't ever be afraid of you know changing something if you if it doesn't if you don't like it just keep Messing with it until you do. Okay, I like that a lot better. I just feel like it's a little softer. You know, it's just like your eye can't catch on any one thing, but you kind of get the gist that those are circles. So, you may have liked it better when it was perfectly clean, and if you do, leave it that way. You know, do it the way I first did it. Yours may be smaller circles. It may not bother you like mine or bother me. Sorry, that was loud probably. Probably need to get like no, a wasn't. softer thing for that to those to sit, pins to sit on. To the glass. All right. Grabbing some yellow here, so I'm going to do one last pass in this area over here. I really, I think I'm. I'm going to grab my cadmium. I'm just not getting the bright enough. Having to add that white to it is diluting it too much for me. I need that bright, bright yellow. So I'm going to clean my brush out, grab my cadmium. This is cadmium medium. Plus it's a little bit more orangey than this one, just slightly more orangey. Okay. I'm loading my brush fairly thick here. 
So I want it to go on thick and cover. So I'm just running it zigzag and dots right on the outside of that circle. cadmium red light I mean thin it down a little bit take off the extra and I'm just going to tap it in around my center and try not to lift off the color because it's not dry do this wait till your yours is dry I'm not waiting because I'm being impatient but really technically glazing works better if you let it dry so Dumber here. Just lots of different layers. Six layers later. I yeah, I'm just keeping on going because I'm not getting to look exactly the way I want it to, so I'm going to keep on doing it till I do. Till I'm happy. Sorry guys. This is yellow oxide. some white you stop at whatever point that you like yours definitely don't have to keep going like this this there we go okay this may do it I just want three distinct layers I want the kind of darker yellow, brighter yellow, and then the kind of more orangey yellow in the center. So it's taking a while to get there. But I think this is close. And then if you want to, you can change the background of your canvas to, you know, something other than brown if you want. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave mine because I kind of like that warm brown color with the oranges. But I think green would be pretty, uh, you know, really whatever color you want. I'm going to add, just make, clean it up here because it's kind of lost some of its color in a couple places. But... up with a little bit of burnt burnt umber in between just one last time all 
I, oh, we got to do the water drops. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot the water drops. Okay, so let's do those. Uh, so oh, we're right at two you, hours. You are not going to be allowed Nobody to forget gonna, them. Okay, good. Oh, no. Uh, I forgot my zinc white. Let me find my zinc white. There we go. You're going to want zinc white for this. I think it's on the materials list. I just forgot to put it out. Okay, good. Yes, it is. All right, so get a small brush. I think I'm going to go ahead and get a light liner brush. Just get a number one liner here. And I'm going to use some of my dark red. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. So I want kind of my shadow color for this. So the shadow color on the on the uh, flowers, you can I'm go ahead and put out a little bit more fresh paint. Just run out of paint here altogether. Most of these colors. Okay, so I'm grabbing a little quinacridone. And a little bit of burnt umber. Got my reds. I'm just making that dark red color that's down in here. That's my shadow color. Thinning it out with some water. You always want to thin it out when you're working with the liner brush, otherwise it won't flow off your brush. And most brushes, like your flat brushes, you don't want to get the paint up into this part. The liner brush, you can do that. It's okay. And they work actually better if you do. Um, because it'll flow a little bit better. You just have to make sure that you clean it really well. So, all right, so that's thinned out and I've got my zinc white over there. I'm going to map out where I want my water droplets. So I like the one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of outline it with this dark. If it's not dark enough, you can add a little bit of burnt umber there. I want a thin outline. of where you want your water drops to be. Let's do one on this one. Keep it thin though, if you can. If you get it too thick, just kind of blot it and you can kind of try again. There you go. Thin. Let's do one. Let's do a little bitty one right here. And we'll do this one is they're not circles. That's one thing that you know they're not perfect circles. If you look at them, they're all kind of uh, you know water's not fixed. So I mean, when it first lays down, it might be of a circle, but then you know as it uh, the wind blows it and when you know the petals move or whatever. They're going to kind of merge. It'll kind of create these long, weird-looking shaped ones. Um, I'll do the kidney-shaped one here. I'm not going to do it quite as big as it is in the picture, but I like that kind of weird-looking one right here. a little bit thick. There we go. We can do one right up here. I think that's good. We've got them kind of well placed and spread out. Maybe do one right here. Just baby, little baby one. Okay, and then I'm going to take my angle brush and I want to go ahead and get a smaller angle brush. I'm going to use a quarter inch angle. 
going to use that zinc white and let's go ahead and use a little bit of this cadmium orange see how that looks with it I may decide to use yellow we'll see I'm just tinting it a little bit I don't want too much of that color in there wipe that off get just a little bit of color with my zinc white and I'm going to do what I did before when I was um, shadowing I want to get a little water tap it off and then touch it on my paper towel so that I get off the extra and I pull the color off the back end of that brush so that the color is just on the tip and I'm going to find the top edges of some of these I'm not going to do this to all of them I might need a little bit brighter white for this part. Let's see. I'm going to add some yellow to that white. I think it's too bright. So I just want it to show up against that dark color underneath just a little bit. I want to keep it fairly subtle so I'm just going right on the top edge real close to the edge with a little highlight. And this one's got the highlights kind of down the middle too. And I'm going to go along the edge just a little. I'm not going to outline it. Just adding a highlight side. And on the red ones, you might want to use a red color. So I'm going to go ahead and use like the just want like one shade lighter than what's already there so to stay subtle I'm using my finger to kind of tap off the middle part so that the color stays mostly on the very edge of that bubble. I don't want it to merge down into the middle really almost at all. You could probably even just use a liner brush and do a little line and kind of pull it towards the center with your finger. Let's use a little bit of straight white with this one because it's on that bright yellow. It's not going to show up so there we go. Some reflections so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that zinc white I might put a little bit of tiny bit of the thero blue in might be kind of an unexpected color we'll see if it works it might not work just a teeny tiny tiniest bit of blue here because it might be like this you know the sky color or something being picked up in your reflection That's not bad. And then that's going to go kind of in the middle of your... I think it's too dark. Let me do that one more time. I got it too solid. I want it to be kind of streaked. So I'm going to use a tip and kind of create little lines in it. There we go. That's better. Let's 
do a little one there. This blue will look good against that orange too. And mostly just the bigger ones are going to get this color. You're not going to really see it on all of them. Okay. And let's grab that liner brush again. I'm going to grab the white. This is the titanium white. The opaque white and I've got it loaded fairly thick and I'm going to create my little teeny tiny highlights this is the sparkle in them so I'm just going to pick a spot on each one of these that kind of has a little bit of sparkle this one I'm going to draw some lines it's not like a dot, they're more like lines. This one's kind of curved a little bit. You can also use the zinc white to kind of fill in the, the um, droplet a little bit, kind of where we did the um, so we did our highlight thing. If you wanted to have a little bit more like a just a subtle change of color from the background can kind of fill it in with a little bit of that zinc white it'll sort of tint it change the color just a little bit Use that orange Now I'm going to go back in with a droplets. That's a little smiley face upside down. You see that? <laughs> it's like a check on her. It's in the picture. It's right here. It's right here. Okay. He's a little smiley face right there in the water drop, but <laughs> we'll break it up a little bit. All right, and right here. Come on. Try that again. If your outline is too obvious, like right here, I'm seeing the outlines a little bit too much. I'm going to grab some of that yellow and just kind of fill it in a little bit so that it's a little bit more natural looking. So I'm going to do that with this, some of these other ones too. Grab that yellow and just... Because the the water drops are going to pick up all of these colors that are around them. So it'll grab the yellow, it'll grab all those oranges. You'll see all kinds of colors in them. It doesn't have to be exactly what's underneath it because they're rounded, you know. So they're going to like pick almost like a mirror. They're going to pick up other colors too. So I'm going to do that now and just add a little bit of yellow to each one of these. Clean up those edges if you've got an edge that just looks a little bit too 
solid or weird looking. Super chat, thank you. This one's from Lady Fair and says, thank you for the water drops. You are welcome, lady. These are fun to do. You will, I mean, I once you kind of get the knack of it and get going with these, these are so fun. You'll want to do them all over everything, <laughs> for every, every flower you do. Uh, super fun. All right, I am just about done with these, I think. Using a little bit of white here just to kind of clean up those edges. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of the bright white again. Put in some really bright streaks in a couple of these if you lost your streaks like I did. The ones that are on the bright white or the bright yellow are almost the hardest because you don't want to be too obvious with them. I grab a little bit of orange and pick up a little bit of orange and do that to so give it a little bit of different color from the background there. And I'm gonna grab some cadmium red light here and add it in to some of these ones that are on that more reddish area. I'm just fussing now, but just trying to get it right, you know, get them most realistic we can. That's good. Zoom out there. Flower, beautiful flower. So pretty. All right, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you try it, you can share it with me on my social media links or down description. Congrats again to our winners of our Frederick's Canvas giveaway. I've sent out notifications to the winners, so hopefully you'll be contacting me. But uh, we'll be doing another giveaway soon, hopefully, maybe next month. And uh, if you try this with me, um, well, I already said that, so <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be back. We won't be back next Saturday. I'll be on vacation. Um, Mark may decide just to do a live show by himself and just, no, he's not going to. What? He's going to be, well, he's going to be, uh, could be probably playing video games so, next Saturday while I'm out. I'll, I'll stream music. live on your channel. There you go. Playing <laughs> you video playing video games. Video games. Yeah. It'll be different. You'll probably get a few people watching you, actually. <laughs> uh, so, but we will be back Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesday schedule has not changed. So we'll be back this Tuesday and next Tuesday. Uh, but this next Saturday, we will be, uh, we won't be here just for the one week. So I guess that was everything. All right. Uh, if you are not a patron and you want to get the traceable for this, you can do that for a dollar a month on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Uh, and, uh, I'll have that up probably later on today or tomorrow. We do it, trace it straight from the original. So it'll be exactly what I painted today. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.